Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can trigger different Android components by manually generating Android intents. So the way the Android ecosystem works is applications are able to communicate with each other and different system services that are running on the device via different messaging objects. One really common type of object is called an Android intent. And this can trigger different activities or receivers or even services that are running inside of different applications or system services. So there are two kinds of intents. These are going to be implicit and explicit intents. So explicit intents actually specify the name of the application that they're targeted towards. And implicit intents specify kind of a generic action that is able to trigger many, maybe many different components on the device. And the system actually broadcasts this intent across the device and lets all of the applications that are registered to receive this intent actually receive it and handle it and maybe perform actions once they've actually received this. Now, a lot of times you'll see different Android malware samples actually use intent filters, which are listening for a particular intent or action across the device to do something malicious. A really good example of this is they'll really often register to listen to when the device receives an SMS message or something like that. And then they'll actually take that SMS message and maybe upload it to a server or something malicious. But what we want to know is how can we trigger this potential malicious behavior dynamically by generating some of these intents ourselves if the system actually isn't receiving these particular broadcasts. So I have one example here that we're going to use and we're going to use the Android manager to trigger some of these events. And then we're also going to show how we can use some of the settings inside of Android Studio to additionally trigger these intents. So let's get right into it. First of all, I'm going to open up my Hello World sample inside of JDEX, and we're going to see how applications actually register to receive different intents. So I've got my sample right here, and I'm going to throw this into JDEX. And let's let JDEX load this, and then let's open up our Android manifest to see the different components inside of the application. Now we can see inside of this application, we actually have multiple components. The first is our main activity, but this actually does have an intent filter as well, because this is listening for the actual launch message that happens when the user will actually click on the icon to open this particular application. And you can see the action to be performed is gonna be this Android intent action main that's then gonna trigger this class. This is a Java class that is going to handle this particular action. We additionally have a few different receivers that are different components inside of this application that also have intent filters that are listening for other actions across the device. The first example here that I added is going to be this Android intent action battery low. And this action is going to be broadcast across the device when the Android device enters a low power state. So when it's running low on battery, that means that this class right here is registered to receive this action by adding this intent filter. And then as soon as it receives this action, this message receiver class on receive is actually going to get triggered. So it's gonna print this to the Android debug log, and then it's going to make this text appear on the screen. So I'm gonna show you now how we can actually trigger this programmatically using ADB to connect to the device that I have running. Then I'm gonna use the Android manager to actually create an intent that is gonna be broadcast across the device and is going to send out this low battery message that's going to trigger this class. I'm gonna bring up my emulator and let's see, I have my emulator here. Let me run. I also have the source code for this activity since I made this as an example so we could see our intents getting triggered. And then this is just a hello world activity. And I'm going to connect a shell to my device. So if I use the Android debug bridge, I can see that I've successfully connected to my emulator. So if I do ADB shell, this is actually going to open up a shell to my device. 
I'm going to bring this up. What I'm going to use now is the Android manager, and this is a command I can use once I actually have a shell connected to my device. And it allows me to do a lot of different helpful things to manipulate the device. So if I do Android manager dash H, so that's what AM stands for, Android manager. This gives me a lot of different commands that I can use for actually manipulating the emulator that I'm currently connected to. But if I look here, I have this thing called this intent specification right here that I can actually specify my action, category, component name, and a bunch of different extra strings, which I'll get into shortly in this video. But first of all, what was the actual intent that I wanted to send to trigger this particular component within the application? If I look at my message receiver class, I want this to actually happen. So I'll look at the log and I'll see that the message has been received. And I'll also see this toast pop up temporarily on the device. But what was that action that I actually needed to trigger? We can see we have our message receiver class right here. And the action from our intent filter is going to be Android intent action battery low. So if I'm trying to trigger the dynamic behavior of this class, what I need to do is I need to copy this action and I need to pull up my terminal. Let me pull this down. My terminal and emulator. And all I need to do is do Android manager and then broadcast since I'm broadcasting an intent. And then I do dash A since that specifies that action string. And then I can just paste in my actual action string. And if you see in the emulator on the left hand side, we got that little pop up battery low temporarily. So we successfully triggered the dynamic behavior of this component. Now, there are a couple other things if you're using the emulator inside of Android Studio. If you go to the little settings tab, let me pull that up. I can actually trigger this by the nice pretty GUI right here for a few different behaviors. One would be the battery. I can actually change the battery level. So let's say it's 90 95% charged right now, and then I can reduce it, maybe go down to 13%. But the system, if you look on the left-hand side, I got my nice battery low trigger. That's because the Android system is actually sending out this intent object for all different registered applications to receive. And then all of them are going to be able to perform their respective behavior based off of this intent message. So that shows you two different ways you can actually trigger an intent object. The only thing about using this extended controls option is it's quite limited. So there's a lot of intents that exist that you can't trigger by this. So what you need to do is you need to actually go through and use the command that we used for this Android broadcast a and then the actual action name to be able to specify those particular actions that are not triggerable from the extended controls. Now let's go on to another component within our example activity. And this is just a really common one that I'll see, which is an SMS receiver. So this is actually going to get triggered once the application receives an SMS message. Then oftentimes what I'll see in malware is they'll do something malicious based off of receiving that notification. So this code is going to get run once that's received. And what this is doing is it's just taking all of the data from that SMS message and it's going to be printing that to the Android logger. So let's try and trigger that. I'm going to close this down, pull up my device, and I'm actually going to use the extended controls for this since it has a really nice text messaging option. I'm going to go over to the phone tab and then this is an example SMS message that I can just send across the device. So I'm going to hit send and then this little pop up on the bottom is actually at our example toast message. But if we want an additional example, we can take a look at the activity and see that it's actually writing to the Android log as well. So we can pull up our Android Studio Logcat, which is already connected to the device. You just pull this all the way up. Make sure you can see it on the left hand side. We can see received SMS. That was the actual text that we sent. That was the example message. And this is going to be the number that it was sent from. So this is this is sent to the Android log. Now I'm going to close this out and I'm going to show how we can add parameters to the intents that we're actually manually generating. 
we take a look at the manifest, there's one more receiver that I have created, and this is actually using a custom intent. So developers are able to specify custom strings that are the generic actions to be performed. This lets applications specify their own specific custom intent filters. So this activity is only going to be triggered once it's receiving this action across the device. So probably only components that it is related to will actually specify this action and be able to trigger it. So I'm going to specify this custom action, but if we take a look at the class, this custom receiver, we can see it's actually specifying additional parameters for this intent object. We can tell this by this get string extra. So this my extra is actually kind of like a variable name and the data associated with that is going to be the argument passed to this intent object. So this extra string associated with this my extra variable name is going to be sent as well along with this intent object. And then this within my application is also going to get printed to the screen. So I can use my Android manager to add a parameter for this and then also trigger this my custom intent. Let me pull up my emulator one more time. And let me close out our extended controls since the extended controls can definitely not trigger custom intents. And I'm going to broadcast this custom intent passing a string extra value that's also going to get printed to the console. So the command was Android manager broadcast dash a for the action string. And I can get that by coming over to my Android manifest. So I'm going to copy this, paste it. Let me make sure you can see my whole command prompt. And then for the extra value, if I take a look at my help, we have this dash E option. So that's where I'm going to specify this string that this intent object is actually expecting as well. So I'm going to specify dash E, which is going to default to type string. And we actually have multiple different extra types. You can do dash dash ez for a boolean value. We can do dash dash ei for an int. But in this case, we were actually specifying a string. And we know that if we look at the actual code in the application is get string extra. So I'm going to do an extra string. So I have my dash e. And then I need my variable name which is going to be this my extra. So I'll paste that in. And then we actually need the value of the string that we're passing to this. So I'm going to write something really cool. Let's say Lori wired is my string extra. And then this is now going to be broadcast and we'll try and catch this on our emulator. Let me put this up here. And we'll move this over here. So now I'm going to send this and we should get a little pop up on the screen since I believe we do also have a toast object that's going to pop up for this class. So we do enter and we see custom intent received. And then if we come over back to our Android Studio, which has the log cat attached, we see received custom intent with extra string Lori wired. So it looks like we were successfully able to trigger this class by generating a custom intent via the Android manager. Now I want to show you some situations for actual Android malware where this kind of use will actually come in handy. So I'm going to pull up another instance of JDEX. And then let's just drop in this example Android Banking Trojan and take a look at the Android manifest and see some of the intent filters and actions that are actually registered in here. So I'm going to open up my resources, androidmanifest.xml. And I can see I have quite a few intent filters for different activities and receivers. And for this one, if I was trying to trigger this receiver device admin class, I might not actually be able to ever dynamically trigger this application if I wasn't able to send manual intents and send these different actions across the device because maybe I don't have a device admin enabled or disabled and I'm not able to do that and actually trigger this within the Android device. 
So what I would do here is if I wanted to trigger this class dynamically, I would create one of these Android Manager Broadcast A and then paste in this device admin disabled if I wanted to actually see what this class does while it's running. This is really useful for a bunch of different malware samples. You can see even when even within this one application, it has so many activities and receivers that are registered for all of these different potential intents that are registered across the device. If we keep on scrolling down, we can even see there's more activities that are dependent upon receiving SMS messages or receiving when the boot action is actually completed, so when the device restarts. So you can create all of these and generate them programmatically via the terminal, just like I showed you with the Android Manager. So this will really help your dynamic analysis of different Android malware samples. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, I showed you how we could manually generate different intent messages and how we can use these intent messages to actually trigger different components within a Android applications. So this is really helpful if we're trying to analyze Android malware and maybe we're not able to actually get the application to trigger a different component of interest. We can actually create these manual intent messages to simulate these different intents across the device. So we have a couple different kinds of intents, implicit and explicit intents. We mainly focused on implicit intents today and how we could simulate these generic actions to be performed across the entire device and have different applications actually run their code to handle all of these different actions. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone and I'll catch you in the next video. I can hold on. Oh my gosh.